Okay. Hopefully this is recording the right way. Hopefully. And if it's not, then we'll just work with it. That's cool. But all right. So, um, Steve, thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. Um, uh, just a real quick recap. This podcast is all about, um, people sharing their stories and figuring out how to get unstuck and, and move through hard times. And, uh, the last couple of um, podcasts I've done have very much been focused on community and you're definitely part of my community. Um, but I'm shifting into this um, phase of life planning and goal setting and stuff. And um, uh, that's just where I'm at personally. And so I, I want to take people on that journey with me. And um, I would say that I've been uh, that kind of a person who hates to be stuck. And so I've worked on that my whole life, but about seven years ago, I think it was, um, you hired me on to be your EA mm -hmm. and, um, my confidence, my, my, um, professional growth, my personal growth, it all, uh, like I started growing exponentially, like so very, very fast. And I think that, Part of that has to do with the fact that um, my spaghetti art brain and rebellion against structure was very, very well complemented by your savant-like strategic thinking. <laughs> 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 and so I wanted to invite you in on uh, this podcast so that we could kind of unpack that a little bit and um, share some of your, I'd love it if you'd share some of your expertise when it comes to personal growth and and planning and stuff. And would love it if you would share a little bit of your story. Well, thank you, Jess, for having me on. Uh, I love discussing this kind of stuff with you and it's fun to share it with, uh, with other people. Um, and it has been an absolute joy kind of watching you go through that. You're I think what's funny about you is that you don't think you're a planner, but I will say that ever since I have known you, the fourth quarter of a year, you are like starting to plan for the next year. Yeah. You're, 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 you get excited and anticipate like what's, what's coming. It's not, a, it's not been always though. I think that that started when I started working for you. <laughs> Oh, well, okay then I'll take it. I'll, I'll take it. <laughs> and I didn't say this, but Steve is the executive pastor of our, um, of our church at Westside. And, um, he hired me on as his executive assistant and, um, all working through or working with Steve. I've always felt like, uh, a partner in ministry rather than a boss, you know, uh, and that's been such a blessing, but I love, I love having these conversations and this strategic planning stuff. It's, it's so much fun. So anyway, stage is yours, dude. <laughs> uh, so uh, when you asked me uh, a question uh, uh, last week about where did it, did I always think like that? Yeah. And uh, what's funny is that I think there's two parts of that question. Cause I think that, yes, I have, uh, you, you made a joke and called me a savant. I don't think so. <laughs> no, I've told but, you this before. I think that you like in your head, I see the way that you process is like having all these calculations in front of you. <laughs> <laughs> that's just, me. that's when I go off into a daze and you can tell what I'm thinking and they just assume that it's good things. And it's not like an ice cream <laughs> truck machine sound. That's true, I guess. <laughs> truck machine. Um, so yeah, I do think that there is, I, I, I am uniquely skilled at that. I think that that's my greatest contribution to most teams is to try to say, okay, how do we get there from here? And what are the steps? Um, but I do think I, while I do think that I, that's a unique piece for me, I, I didn't one, I didn't realize it for a long time. Hmm. So there's something worth that's worth unpacking. Uh, but I think that it was, it, it is something that you can, grow uh in oh, so yeah. well i don't think that everybody sees the numbers float in their head i think it is something that that uh that you can grow in so the interesting thing i think was that i didn't realize that uh and we're i know you're here to talk about strategic planning but i'm going to talk about i think strengths just for a second go for it 
I think that what I didn't realize for a long time is that I was unique in that. Mm. Right. So, uh, I told a coworker that I was going to write a book and it was going to be on this one topic. And they looked at me and they were like, yeah. Yeah. Which was totally discouraging that their voice was like, <laughs> and I'm like, great. I... <laughs> and what they said was, uh, Yes, you, like you could write that, but you should write on how you set goals because I don't know how you do that and you need to teach people how to do that and you're really, really good at it. Yeah. And I thought, really? Because it's not that hard. It, like it just wasn't that difficult. And I read an author, uh, David C. Baker, who said uh, he was talking about uh, an agency understanding what the agency was good at. And he says, it's kind of like reading the label from inside the jar. So mm -hmm. you can kind of see it, but to everybody else, they're like, it's pretty obvious, but to you inside the jar, you're, you're looking at the backside of the label and the words are reversed and it's hard to recognize what it is. So I say all of that to say, while, while you might look at somebody else and say, oh, they're really great at this. You make joke about, uh, I'm really great at it. I think everybody has a piece that of their contribution to any team, to any community that they're in, that they, it's hard for them to recognize. They need to pay attention to what it is and they need to like, that's the most important thing they do is that they offer that. Yeah. Right. And so the, so planning and strategic planning that, that fits in only if it supports you make, giving your best contribution, right? It's not, I think it's I think it's a very powerful thing in, to to have great goals, set great targets, and work through them. Mm -hmm. But if in the end you aren't actually offering what you're unique at, then you mm -hmm. kind of it, I don't know. It's like a cake without the icing, right? Like it's yeah. So so what I hear you saying is that is that that is your thing, but not everybody has to have that thing yes. of strategic yeah. planning. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you can still be very successful and move through and set good goals and all that kind of stuff, even if that's you, not your gift. You should set good goals, but in the end, it should be so that you can make that contribution. Like it's not, it isn't the end. The end goal isn't to have a great plan. The end goal is to you make the best contribution. So it, it hasn't, it hasn't always been there, but there's some piece of being able to understand what comes next that has been something that uh is something i was i i had some natural ability in but i also it's like a muscle right i had to use it all of the time and i had to figure out uh this is the other thing and this is about i'm gonna relate it back to strengths again i had to figure out how to offer that in a team when that wasn't a part of my job Mm -hmm. Right. So, uh, when, when I started at Westside goal setting, planning, figuring out the strategic steps was not a part of my job description at all. Right. Mm -hmm. At all. I was a new guy on campus. I, I hadn't grown up in this, with this team. That was not, nobody was looking at me to do that, but I had to figure out how to, um, offer it and kind of offer, uh, tweak my, my, role to try to put myself in as many situations where I could use that muscle and strengthen that muscle and offer it. And the more that it got offered, the more that the team started to lean into that. Uh, and, and then the stronger it got because I got more reps in it. And it was, I, I had to figure out how do I, how do I offer this whenever possible in a supportive kind of way, not in a, I'm good at it, get out of my way, but like, yeah. uh, how can I offer this as support as, as much as possible? And then it's been, then it's been a blast. And honestly, that's what, as soon as I figured that out, uh, I realized that I could wear, I could be that, but I could wear, a, 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 I use the analogy of, I could wear a bunch of different shirts, right? I could, it's the same me inside. But I could do that for my day job. I could do that for, uh, I do some uh, church consulting. I could do that. I'm doing the same thing there. I'm just going to somebody else's church and helping them figure out where they are and what the steps are to get them where to, to where they want to be. I started uh, uh, consulting, mm -hmm. right? And it's the same thing. I, I get to 
I get to do that all all over the place. It's the same job. I just put on a different shirt to go serve somebody else. That's awesome. So that's kind of it's almost like the precursor to all of this strategic planning that we're talking about next is figuring out what that thing is for you and then wrapping your brain around how you can grow in it and how you can put yourself in situations where you can use it. And mm-hmm. so it's, I see why you're, you're like camping on it for a second because it's so valuable and really in order to be effective in all the rest of the things that we're about to talk about, you have to know what that thing is. Would you yeah. agree? Yeah. You have to have some clue to it. Yeah. I don't know that you have to, like, it took me 15, 20 years to land in this spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and that took a ton of experimenting and like, it's, it, it, uh, I use the analogy of like being in going and renting an Airbnb of a massive house and you in the middle of the night, you're sitting there watching TV and you hear the, the fire uh, mm-hmm. alarm beep, like the batteries toast. And you, you know, you get up and go, I, I think that's upstairs. And so you run upstairs and then you stop and you're trying to listen for it. And then know no, it exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> and you run downstairs, but it doesn't, it beeps randomly. So you yeah. only get like, periodic clues and you think you're in the right room, but then it beeps behind you. I think that's what this journey of trying to figure out your strength is, is like finding that fire alarm, a dead battery, because you just get clues every once in a while and you feel like you make big bursts and then you kind of camp there for a little bit and you make more big bursts and finally you kind of get there and then you can kind of sit in it and really really hone it. And I think the reason why that's really important uh, is because when you're trying to do big, challenging things in your own life, there there has to be something that's refilling and ener- energizing because anything that's hard to do is you, you'll, you'll burn out of it. Like you will, even if you had a big goal, a big target to hit, if you're, if it's not filling your tank in the process, you'll give up. Like, it's just, if you don't get to use that, what's unique to you, or you can't see how it's connected to, to that target, you'll give up on it. Mm. Eventually. Okay. Well, so taking into consideration that there are, that people who are watching this are in all kinds of different phases in life. And some of them maybe haven't figured this out yet, or maybe they, they've got a clue and they're trying to figure out how to grow that. Um, all of that very much so relates to being strategic about planning your your annual goals. Mm-hmm. And I'd say that that's very true for me and my experience too. How would you, like, what are the really important pieces um, or elements that are absolutely necessary when you're uh, forming your goals and your growth plan for the year? What would you say is imperative to have in place in order to be um, success, successful in the planning phase. Okay. Uh, I think it has to be just outside your comfort zone. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not, not so far out that it seems unrealistic, but just enough that you're makes you swallow. Right. As yeah. you're like, okay, I think that's it. I think because that's where all the fun stuff happens. It is. The, yeah. The, the Michael Hyatt quote that says, uh, all the great things happen on the other side of your comfort zone. And yeah. I think that's hundred percent true. So I think that's necessary. You you've shared with me on that, uh, that pool analogy that has really been helpful to me. Share a little bit about that. Like What's what that experience analogy? is it like. Sounds like it was great. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not. So it's a great way to gauge where you are in your comfort zone. So, um, I, I was stressed out one day about something and, uh, unsure about, um, whether or not I could actually handle all of what was on my plate. And um, you shared this analogy analogy with me that like, say you're in a swimming pool and you're in the three foot deep and maybe you're just learning how to swim or something. I don't know, but you're moving like walking towards the deep end and you get to a certain phase or a certain place in that pool where you can start to feel the ground fall beneath your feet. Mm-hmm. And, um, and what you said to me is that that's a sweet spot right there where you start to feel a little bit nervous 
because you know that the 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 floor is coming out from underneath your feet, but you feel the water creeping up a little bit, but you're good. Like you're still solid yeah. because you can still touch that right there. Ever since we had that conversation, that is how I've been able to check and balance whether or not I'm in the right spot mm. is, are my feet still on the ground? Like, am I still good? Can I still handle this? Like, where am I at in the pool? <laughs> and if I am in the three foot spot, then that's no good, you know, but if I am in the eight foot spot and I can't touch the ground and I'm drowning, that's no good. So it's a great checks and balance. We should record more of our conversations. Cause that sounds like it's a great analogy and it was really impactful that I'm remember, <laughs> I'm not even remembering telling you that. So that's great. <laughs> okay. That's, that's great. But it is, but it's exactly it though. Right. It is, it is just enough. You take a kid, it's like taking a little kid, right? And you take a little kid and you're holding them in there and then you let them go and they panic and you're like, just stand up for a second. Like just yeah. put your feet on the bottom. You'll be, you're taller. You're good. Than you're, good. you're good. And we do <laughs> that too, right? So we, we shouldn't necessarily throw ourselves in the deep end to the point where it's, it's going to be harmful to the people around us and to ourselves, but we should absolutely be in a spot that that makes us a little bit nervous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause that's where the, the good stuff happens. So I think that's, that's important and trying yeah. to figure out what setting your goals. I think that's an important piece it needs to, it needs to be just out outside your comfort zone. I think that it needs to, uh, it also needs to incorporate, like you have to have a really strong why for it. Yeah. I think strengths are connected to that. Why it's important going through some kind of exercise to go, you know, why is this important to me? What happens if I don't do it? And, and kind of what are the consequences if I don't, uh, I don't meet this. Some of those are really compelling. Some are not. Some whys you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, unpack a compelling why. Uh, well, you could, if, if it's, let's say it's an income goal. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, a compelling why might be, uh, being able to take your family on a vacation that you haven't been able to, to, to take. And that's compelling. It's not as compelling when my kids were, uh, you know, under 10, that was a little stressful, but, uh, <laughs> as I'm getting to the spot where I've got a junior in high school, I'm like, Hmm, cause if I don't do this now, I'm going to like that window's closing, right? So yeah. that's a that's a a compelling why to go got to make this much more money because I want to do this this vacation because I've only got a year and a half left of this kid before he moves out. So that's a compelling. Yeah. The the thing that um that I see in that that makes it incredibly um compelling is that it's connected very strongly with your values. And yeah in that, that value of being a great dad and really like, um, maybe your family being your first ministry and it being like, that's a high value and it makes it super compelling because it's, it's connected to your personal values. Mm -hmm. So yeah, finding that thing. That's it. That is a big piece of it. Uh, it doesn't always have to be like, I can have goals that are for well, maybe they, they do. If I'm thinking out loud, even if I have goals that are for an organization that aren't deeply connected to my values, I probably still have a value of like wanting to deliver and perform. And it's a different, it, it, it's not an immediate connection to my mm -hmm. values, but it is eventually right. Cause I can tie that to getting promoted or and the impact that that has. And then I get a raise and then I can take my kid on a vacation. And exactly. It. Yeah. It connects somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think, I think defining that target is, is really valuable and getting a picture of what that, that looks like uh, and kind of painting that detail of, okay, well, what does it look like 10 years, five years, a year from now? kind of fast forward and describe what that life is like uh, as if you're sitting in it, not as if you're like watching somebody else live it, but as you're sitting in it can help you see some of the pieces that are going to be necessary in order to get there. Mm -hmm. Some right? imagination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. 
So some of the, like having a picture of, of where you're trying to go. If I'm, if I'm sitting here and thinking, okay, I want to be able to do vacations and what's necessary in order for me to do those kind of vacations with my family. Well, I have to have a good relationship with them or else those vacations are going to be annoying. I have to have the finances to be able to do it. I have to have the time off. I have to have all of those pieces. Well, there's, there's multiple parts of that goal that are necessary, right? So if I want to have a strong relationship with my kids, I have to spend time with them between now and five years from now. Yeah. Uh, if I want to have a relationship with my spouse, I need to, I need to carve out the time for that. Uh, I also need to carve out the time for continuing to learn and, and be more valuable to my organization so that I can get paid more. Uh, and, uh, you know, so there's, there becomes a lot of variables that have to be true in order for that picture to be true. And it starts to unpack some of the different kinds of goals that can come out of uh, that kind of a exercise. To make that thing happen. Yeah. Okay. So the first thing that you said was, I forget the first thing that you said. <laughs> and then, and then why? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Gotta be compelling. What, what's your why? Compelling, connected with your why. And then, uh, and then um, to, you, have, you have to have a forward thinking picture of what it is that you want to so that you can work backwards. Those are the the things that you you think make a good solid plan. I think those are the things that make a good target. Okay. Uh, uh, a good goal. I think that the plan is a, your ability to break that into smaller and smaller steps. So goal is you have to have a really compelling goal. And then the, the hard work, and this is honestly where most people that I work with need somebody else to facilitate their thinking because they get stuck in going, yeah, that's a great picture. I have no idea how to get there. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so it does become helpful and you don't always have to uh, hire a coach to help you do that. Uh, It is helpful to have somebody uh, do it. The, I think the, the reason why you hire an outside coach to do it with you is because they don't have, um, they're not, right. So if you go to your spouse and you're like, Hey, I have this goal to do X, Y, and Z every one of your steps, they think about how that impacts them. Yep. Right. Uh, you talk to, if, if you're, if you own a business and you're thinking about that every, if you talk to your employees about, Oh, I have this goal for that. They're thinking, okay, how does that impact my job? Yeah. And so, so there is value to getting somebody that's outside of, they won't be impacted whether you success or you succeed or fail at this uh, to help you think through some of those things, but your ability to break it into smaller steps is probably is the, that's key to, to actually having a great plan. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll say that, um, I can, uh, confirm that that whole idea of having somebody help you to facilitate those thoughts is so very, very important. Um, you're my coach, uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, the conversations that we have in front of a whiteboard are so incredibly valuable. And there are so many times when I can think back and, and, and remember about how I was stuck in a situation and I would talk through this stuck and you would just find these little like gems and start mm-hmm. just writing stuff down on a board. And, uh, and it helps to get you out of that cycle that you're, you're stuck in of just repeating the same things over and over again. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, um, I would, I would second that I would say definitely get somebody outside of your circle, maybe. Yeah. That can help you think through those things. It's just it's... To even scribe your thoughts, right? Because yep. you just have this spaghetti mash that's coming out that you can't see through. And they're, they're trying to go, well, how do I write this down? Cause yeah. even just that exercise of, of writing it down is helpful. Yeah. Yeah. It's good stuff. Okay. I think the, the, oh, the, the piece I was just going to say, the pieces uh, are, there's a, there's a lot of ways to, to do that exercise. Like one would be, um, honestly doing a mind map. If you're familiar with a mind map is 
kind of like, if this is the core, if this is what I want in five years, well, what are the things that I'm going to draw like a spider web off of it? Like, and, and that can help to unpack those, the steps that take you to get there. The other way to, to do that is to, it depends if you're like a linear thinker or if you're kind of a scattered thinker, if you're a scattered thinker, do that, that, that web of thoughts. If you're more of a linear thinker, then uh, if you think about a five-year goal, then say, okay, well, if that's true in five years, what's true in one year uh, and back that off and then say, well, when then, then what's true in six months, what's true in three months, what's true in a month, what's true this week, what's true today. Right. And just keep breaking the smaller and smaller pieces mm -hmm. to, to something that's bite size. Cause that's the other piece of a plan is if you have a good target, the plan has to be, you have to go from abstract to really concrete. And that really concrete has to be something that I can accomplish today. Yeah. Yeah. Right? I mentioned writing a book. Okay. A book is massive undertaking. And every time that I'm sitting there going, I'm writing a book. That's for future me, future me will take care of that. But if I'm sitting down and saying, okay, I've got to write 500 words today. Now mm -hmm. that's okay. I can do that. I can take that step. And then tomorrow I can take that step again. And tomorrow I can, the next day I can take that step again. It has to be small. Your steps have to be small enough to. Yeah. And without, without breaking that down and having that, this is the piece of it that I'm taking today. You're not going to get anywhere at all. That like that, that's where that dream is just always a dream. That's good stuff. I'd say, um, uh, when it comes to the strategy of thinking through your, your process, uh, for me, my, uh, I am a very scattered thinker. And so I would suggest that bubble like that. And then after you do that process, do the linear, because yeah. that's going to help you line things out to put them exactly where they need to go in order. So I'd do them both. <laughs> I would. Yeah. You, you do have to end up somewhere where you have a plan on what's what steps to take because, uh, and you and I actually just got to go through this, uh, because your temptation, once you have that great picture and you have the steps is to just start doing everything. Yeah. Which is overwhelming. And it's impossible. It's overwhelming. Yeah. And you feel like, well, I gotta, I just have to do everything. There was this great picture, uh, that, that I, I saw someone present about this idea of trying to hit goals and they had a, they had a pitcher of water and they had 10 cups lined up in front of them. And they said, uh, my goal is to fill all 10 of these cups. And so because we feel like we got to make progress and everything, most people go and take that pitcher of water and they put a little into this cup and a little into this cup and a little into this cup and a little into this cup, and a little into, and, the, and two hours later, nothing is done. You've made mm -hmm. a little bit of progress on everything and you don't feel any closer to your goal. You have no momentum. And uh, instead we should pick something and go, I know that I can't do all of these. So what's the most important one that I do first? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fill that. And we even talked through, okay, you got four quarters in a year. What are you going to do in this quarter? And understand that you're not going to tackle the other thing until you get to that, that quarter. You got to tackle one thing at a time. Shoot, it's why uh, if you listen to Dave Rams, you talk about paying off debt. He goes, pick. That's exactly one. what I was thinking. Yeah. Right? Pick one. <laughs> pick one, the easiest one to finish. Finish yeah. that one first. And it's partly because of how we're we're wired. We need momentum. We need, and we can't tackle them all at once. You tackle them all at once. You don't make any progress and you you flame out. So yep. there's momentum. Yeah, that's good stuff. Okay, well, so what do you think, moving on to the next mm -hmm. thing, what do you think um, is absolutely necessary when it comes to execution and sustained success when uh, when you're chasing after your goals? Well, I think it has a lot to do with what we just talked about, right? It, uh, if, if you are going to continue to do that, you have to, you have to have steps that you are actually gaining momentum on. I think that's a, that's a big piece of it. Um, the other piece is, well, I think there's four pieces that, 
that help you sustain this. Uh, so you got four important things. You have to have great targets. We've already talked lots about that. Uh, really clear, uh, compelling targets. You have to have um, strengths. Like you have to be deploying your strengths. So you have to, you can't, you can't, you're going to you're lose momentum if you're not offering the best version of you. Third is habits. So what are the systems that you're kind of running your life by that help to make sure you're making progress? One of the, probably the easiest habit that you can employ in your life is deciding every day, what are the big three things that I'm going to tackle today? Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of more habits that you can add that, that strengthen you, but I think at least deciding what are the big three things that I have to, most impactful things I can do today that are going to move my goals forward. That's breaking it down to those small enough steps, right? Uh, and then the fourth thing is evaluation. And and it, you, you can't really do this well without pausing every once in a while and evaluating how's it going. Because even when you set a goal, you don't have all of the info, right? And mm -hmm. as you, let's say you get 90 days in and you have some new variables, and you think like, let's, let's say the, the vacation, right? Okay. So I made a goal that I was going to be able to go on a vacation in, in three years with my family, big vacation to Europe. And maybe 90 days in, all of a sudden you have this opportunity to do much smaller trips, but you get, you get to do them once a month. Well, you'd be, it would be ridiculous to go, well, I decided on that big goal of this. And now I, I do have an opportunity to go away with my kid, you know, every month for a getaway. Why yeah. that, that would be ridiculous. Right. Yeah. So evaluating, how's it going? Are those, is my target still accurate? Do I need to make some adjustments? What should I stop doing? What should I start doing? That regular evaluation I think is important. I, I think too, on that note of evaluation, um, I naturally am a re rebel against structure. And um, I don't know if there's anybody else out there that's like that. But, <laughs> but but being able to to say, hey, there's a a a means for me to actually look at things, it gives you that flexibility to shift when you need to and the freedom to to um to make changes and not feel stuck in this rigid space. Um, but that is guided, like you have rails that you're still staying on and that way you're still able to move forward and accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. You it's know important. I mean? It's impo important for both ends of the spectrum. It's important for people who want, like they feel boxed in, mm -hmm. they need the chance to do some real evaluation, not just like, Hey, I'm going to change direction because I'm bored of this, but like yeah. some real evaluation. Uh, it, it gives them some flexibility that they aren't, they don't have concrete shoes on. So for them, it's really valuable. But for those people that are at the other end of the spectrum that are like, I decided on something five years ago and I'm just going to keep marching towards it. It forces them to sit down and go, is this still the right target? Yeah. So That's both right. ends of that doesn't matter where you are in that spectrum. You need to sit down and go, okay, well, is this still, am I on track? What needs to change? Is that still the right goal? Yeah. Do I still keep marching to that? Whether or not you want freedom or you like stability, evaluation, I think is incredibly important. That's awesome. Okay. Well, um, we could probably spend like another hour talking about those four things, but I know that you've got stuff that you've got to, you've got some leaves to rake or something. So <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I'm curious if you have um, a direction to point people to get some more learning on this. I think that, uh, well, I'll let you go first. I have my recommendations, but <laughs> what would you recommend as far as resources to learn uh, how to do those things really effectively? So I alluded to the, uh, I have, I started a, a, a yeah. company that helps do some of this stuff at a really entry level kind of way. So it's self-leadership really is, is what it is. And, uh, you can go to stronger group, uh, stronger grp.com and learn more about it there. Uh, but I would say the other, a uh, couple of other tools that, uh, that I would consider is, uh, one is a 
I'm a huge proponent of uh, the full focus company's full focus planner. It takes some of these things are really built into that system of, of uh, planning. Uh, and there's also some, uh, a couple of books that I would explore with uh, written by Michael Hyatt on this idea of habits that I think are, are really valuable. The, the one other thing that I would consider of resources to look at is an understanding your strengths. There, um, there are a ton of books out there from, uh, uh, living from your strengths to, uh, you know, a personality test. I think those are all valuable. None of them are like the, none of them are the map to where the, 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 uh, fire alarm is in your house, but they are clues, right? It's like the beeps along the way. And so I would, I would explore all of them, understanding that they're general enough that they can give you some clues as to what is your really unique contribution. One of them is, um, uh, working genius by uh patrick oh, so understanding where you are you on the abstract side of thinking the dreamer side of thinking or are you on the concrete like i'm going to make sure every i is dotted t is crossed i think those are those are valuable all valuable resources um i think the other one that i would recommend i'm i use hyatt michael hyatt full focus planner because i need structure in my life in order to be successful i think on the other end of it there's also uh, the way that you think, like that that uh, mindset process. And if you are a structured person and you need some more direction as far as mindset goes, then Brendan Burchard is also mm-hmm. a really good one. Yeah, yeah. Well, awesome. Look at uh, his his stuff is uh, the full focus is about what do you want to get done today, and uh, the Brendan Burchard stuff is how do you want to feel today. Yeah. Yeah. So it really kind of just depends on, on what What you need. need. All right. So, uh, thank you so much for, for joining me. I do want to call out stronger. Uh, I'm a part of that coaching. It's so incredibly, incredibly valuable to me. And Steve's worked really hard at setting up, uh, just a system that is built to support you and help you to accomplish your next things. Um, and so if that's something that you're interested in, um, I will attach a link to his website here, along with some of the other resources that we, um, talked about, but I really just appreciate you, Steve, and your investment in me you know, professionally in in our work and uh, you're a great friend. And and so thank you very much for your time and for sharing your expertise. It's been awesome. Well, thank you for having me. It's been a lot of fun. And I'm glad that we got to record that swimming thing because I we should record more of our conversations. <laughs> they sound like they're gold. <laughs> they are gold. I'm telling you, I can't tell you how many people I've shared that with. It's uh, such a great evaluation tool. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Well, I'll let you get to to uh, the rest of your day. Thanks again for your time. No problem.